Chapter 3 is about floors, roofs, and uh, ceilings. So if you follow chapter 1 and created the building uh, model, you should have a project and a building that looks as uh, you see. It is a four-story office building and uh, one roof and we added a curtain wall in front of it and there are some um, offices uh, in the building so today we are going to add floors roof and um, ceilings to the building so let's see how we create a floor before we do that let me um, say a couple of things as a reminder so right now i have the 3d view open and i can open other uh, views so for example i can go and open level one view and there are two views open so this is still the same project this is not a new project so when you save your file um, you should still have uh, one file or one project so from architecture tab uh, so far what we practiced were wall door and window and how to create also curtain uh, system and curtain grid uh, so this chapter is going to be about roof um, ceiling and floor so let's first add a floor so i opened floor plan and i am at level one and this is where I want to add my uh, floor. So let's, uh, if you click on drop down menu, you will see the floor architectural. Uh, even if you do not choose the drop down menu and you just click on floor, by default it will go to architectural floor. So when you choose um, floor, you will have your uh, common draw book board or a draw panel and as you see by default I can pick walls to create my uh, floor because uh, usually we first place walls and then we create the floor so you can just pick walls as you see if I hover over the walls it will hi highlight the walls so I can select each wall uh, and then it will create the floor also, if you hover over one wall and you press tab, it will actually highlight the chain of walls for you. And then if you select the chain of walls, it has highlighted the boundary of the floor for you. I'm going to do control C because I don't want to hide um, the most one now. But I want you to remember that. So if you hover over a wall, then you press tab key. Select the chain of walls. Okay, so uh, let's actually use a draw panel because here is where I want to add the floor first. So you go and choose line, and then the wall I want to create is a 20 by 80. So uh, let's actually, I'm going to start here, and then I can adjust my floor if I want. Uh, so let's click and click again so it always gives you the guidelines so you can see how where it actually gets aligned with the wall so then you can click again so I want my wall to be 80 so you can eyeball it or you can type 80 80 it will actually lock the line for you you should and then again, as you see, uh, where it gives me the guideline, it is not exactly 20 feet. So you can um, type 20, not exactly 20 feet, and then you go all the way up, and you have created a rectangle of 20 by 80, and that creates your floor. So I can just press finish edit mode and then I have created the floor. You can always check what you create in 3D so I'm going to go to there you go.
So now let's practice another way to create a floor. I'm going to go back to level one. And I'm going to select floor again, floor architectural. And this time I'm going to actually um, show you how to change your properties or type of the floor. So pay attention to option bar. As you see here for the floor, I have the option to change the offset, which I don't want to do. And you can extend into wall or if you uncheck it, it does not extend the floor into wall core. Let's make sure actually it does for now. And under properties, if you go to drop down menu, this is how you can change the type of floor, which I'm not going to change now, but I just wanted to show you. There are other properties you can change. So under constraints, for example, you can change the level. I am at level one, so I expect the constraint to be at level one. And I'm not going to change that. But if you select it, you could change your level. So this is how you can change properties and this is, it is always recommended to change properties before you create an object. It's always easier if you do it that way. So this time I'm going to use pick line tool. So I showed you sort of how to use pick walls and we use the line itself. This time we, let's use pick lines. So instead of picking walls, I'm going to pick lines. Uh, the only difference is that pick walls actually um, identifies the wall and picks that. Uh, but pick line is going to identify uh, just one edge of that wall. So let's do that this time. Again, if you hold the tab, it's going to actually um, sort of highlight your selections. And if you uh, keep pressing, then it will uh, select the chain of lines for you. So that is one way you can uh, select. But if I do this, it's actually going to go over this part that I already created a floor for. So that is not what I want to do. Let's see what happens. If you go over finish edition, Actually, going to give you a warning that says highlighted floors overlap. Let's see how to fix that. So if I choose the floor, and this is how you can select it. As you see, when I hover over the floor, it says floors, because that's the family of floor, and it also gives you the type. So I know that the floor is highlighted. If I select it, my floor is selected. If you double click it, or another way to do that is if you select it, you can choose edit boundary. So double clicking is same as editing the boundary. Then you can actually grab that piece of the floor and drag. So now you have the floor actually edited. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my 3D. And this is what it looks like. So I have the piece of uh, floor that I created at the entry, and then the floor that I created at level one. So both of them are at level one. One is first floor, one is at entry. Okay, the next thing I want to do is that I want to copy the floor I created and um, paste it to other levels. So I don't want to recreate that floor again and again. I just want to use copy and paste. If you go back to level one and select that floor and under clipboard, you can choose copy to clipboard. And if you go to paste a uh, drop down menu, make sure you choose the paste uh, drop down menu. So then you can paste it to align levels. So you select align to selected levels and then you want to go all the way to level four. So you choose level two, three, four. So as you see, I have copied my floor to the other floors. 
now I want to also add a mezzanine so uh, let's go to level 2 that is uh, similar to what we did as editing the floor but let's practice again so if you select a floor again you can do edit boundary to get back to sketch mode or you can double click both of them will get you back to sketch mode and then if you grab that side of the floor you can drag it so depending on what size you want it to be as you see it's snapping every two feet i want it to be actually a five feet mezzanine so you can just let it go and then here you can select the dimension line and type five so now I have a five foot mezzanine and make sure you always finish edit mode. Uh, would you like walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? Sure, that's fine. Let's do that. Joining. Um, okay, that's fine. Let's just say I'm drawing. Uh, okay it extended the second floor as you can see so you can repeat that for floors uh, three and uh, four so that's just a practice of how to modify a floor the next thing that we want to do is to see how to create a slope and for that we can use a slope arrow let's see how to do that so let's go back to level one and let's create a floor that is 4 by 12. Um, so I'm going to go back to floor. And here I'm going to add a piece of floor to show you how to use um, slope arrow. So again, I can use line. And as I said, I want it to be 4 by 12. So let's go 4 feet. And remember, you can either eyeball it or you can type number four and then 12 i'm just going to type it it doesn't matter how far you go you can type four. and pay attention to end point and middle point um signs so the square indicates i'm at so as you see finishing the boundary does not mean you have finished the sketch you need to make sure that we say finish edit mode so now it's finished but what i wanted to do was to add a slope so i need to actually double click or go to edit boundary again here i have the option for slope arrow let's select it and here, as you see from midpoint, you can draw your arrow and end it at the other side of the floor. And under properties, you can change um, the properties of the slope or properties of the arrow that controls the slope. So level at tail can be default. So height offset at tail is one foot. So that means that's one foot above. And I think that should be fine. We want it to actually go down, so let's change that to negative one. We don't want the slope to go up. So let's say finish edit mode and see what does it look like. Let's just check it in 3D. Okay, so depending on where where was the direction of my arrow, um it actually did not do what I intended to do so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to double click on the floor select the arrow uh, so it actually needs to go the other way so height at offset should be negative one so I'm going to change the height offset at tail to zero height offset at head to negative one so again, depending on which uh, way you draw it, you might need to control that. Okay, now it looks fine. In case you did not 
get um, the offset correctly. So if it did not uh, adjust or did not exactly start from the floor, it was not level with the floor, then you can change the offset. It's a matter of changing properties a little bit until you get what you want to get. So we want the slope to go up to the entryway. Okay, the next thing I want to do is actually I'm going to zoom out and go to the other side of the um, floor. So I want to actually use the speed line tool to create a slope on this side of entryway. Let's go back to level one. So this is where I want to add it. You can double click the floor again to modify this side. So I want to first adjust this corner. I'm going to trim this part of uh, the floor. So I'm going to create an opening. Oops, that was not the point I meant to grab. Uh, so, okay, this was 80, so it should go to 75, so this should be it. On this side also you can grab, there are different ways to do this, you can also use trim, so you can also use trim corners, I'm just going And then I'm going to go to line tool and so this is where I want to add my um, speed line. So as you see I have the option to add a split line. I'm going to select that. I'm going to um, add a couple of points or split lines. So then I can use those to change um, the slope. Uh, let's change the height offset from level to negative one. And then I'm going to first click on the first point, and then I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to eyeball it, or I can type. So that's two feet. The next one I'm going to do click on this one again. And from this point, so as you see, I'm clicking on these points a couple of times uh, to be able to control the measure. So don't worry about uh, clicking on them a couple of times. This one I'm going to have Four feet. I'm typing, and as you see, I'm not typing uh, the units by default. It will be at feet. Uh, so the next one is here. I'm just clicking on these points a couple of times until I have the line. So make sure you continue clicking on these points until you have everything sort of. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So after I have done that, I can hit escape. So you can always get out of the tool if you hit escape or if you click on modify. So the next thing I'm going to do is to click on this point. And as you see, then the control for dimension or for the slope is activated. Then I'm going to type negative one of this floor may be slightly inaccurate to extreme shape. Okay, that's just a warning. Let's see if it works or not. Then. Um, okay. Okay, it's asking me to save the project. This is actually a good time to talk about this. So I can say uh, save the project and or I can say do not save and set reminder. And if I do that, you will see that it actually also asks for the number of versions you want to save. And um, uh, don't do that. So uh, it automatically saves multiple versions. I'm going to cancel this. 
Uh, so make sure that uh, you actually submit the latest version. So always save your file, save as project. And I'm going to save this. As you see, I have multiple versions, but still the one that was um, that ha does not have any version numbers. That is my latest version or copy of the project. So make sure you always double check that before you submit and that is your latest. So hit save and click on. Let's go to 3D and check my slope. Okay, it looks fine. So that is how you can control the slope. So if you want it to be more or less angled, you could control it with selecting these um, points and um, changing the number. Uh, as you see, now that I click on it, it does not let me select the point. So you should hit tab key. So if you hit the tab key, then you can select it and you can. The next thing to do is actually to see how to create an opening to the floor. So let's actually do that on level four. So what I want to do is to add an opening by face. Also, if you are under architecture tab, if you check opening, you see that we have the option to create opening by face. We can create a shaft, wall openings we already practice, or we can create a vertical opening. Always pay attention to the windows that open and actually they tell you what that tool does. So you can read about biface opening or vertical opening. So as you see, vertical opening cuts a vertical opening through a roof floor or ceiling. And that is an opening that's perpendicular to a level. That's different by opening by face because that is perpendicular to the se selected face of the roof floor or ceiling. Let's do that by face. Because this is floor and it's flat, it actually be same as vertical. So let's do by face. I want to create a 15 by 15 opening. So you can click. So I had already selected the floor. Um, again, type 15, enter. Again, you can eyeball it, type 15, enter. it so I can just follow mind. There we go. So now I have an opening. If you go to finish edit mode, I have an opening. It is highlighted and selected. So if you go to move, for example, you can move it around. So let's let's say I want to grab this side and move it a little bit to here or Let's move again. I want to move it by two feet to the right. So that is how you can use move. So first you select the object you want to move, then under modify you can use move. The shortcut is MV. Most tools or options they have a shortcut. So you can, for example, on the architecture wall also have the shortcut which is wa door is dr and so on then i want to create another opening this time i want to add an opening which is a shaft opening and that can be used for um, adding an elevator for example or stairways <clears throat> so let's see how to do that let's go to level two and um, I want to add the shaft here. So I go back to architecture. Then I use shaft opening. Again, you have your common drawing uh, panel. I'm going to use line. I'm going to start from this corner. But before I do that, I'm going to actually double check my constraints. 
it is the base constraint is level 2 so it's going from level 2 up base offset is negative 1 which is fine so I want to make sure it creates a hole at level 2 top constraint is unconnected I'm going to change that to you can go all the way to level 4 or it can go all the way to root let's choose root the top offset let's change that to 1 so that makes that um, that way we make sure that it cuts through the last level which is roofing i can hit apply or i can just drag my mouse over my canvas that means it will so you can start at endpoint and go to the right I want this to be 9 by 15 you can type 15 I'm going to go up let's type 9 enter 15 and then I'm going to go down so I have created my opening say finish edit mode let's go to 3d let's go right so I went all the way to roof which is case but it actually helps to see better because it has cut through all floors so that is how I have created the shaft opening now that we are here let's check something else if you go to view you can use tile views so if I use tile view it will show me multiple views that is great because I can actually make any changes in one view especially if I make changes in 2d I can see the changes applied in 3d as well so that is always helpful because um, sometimes you want to work with one view but at the same time you want to see what's happening and what it looks like in another view as well okay let's go back to view and i'm going to go to tab view again because i can have a larger image okay the next thing to do is to actually add a roof so for that i'm going to go to roof floor plans so if you do not see the roof what you need to do is that under properties I need to go down okay, I need to make sure so the shaft was selected I need to make sure I click on uh, the right view or in this case that's the roof floor plan uh, so then you can see the properties for that floor plan so you go down to underlay and you change the range base level to level 4 and you should be able to see the underlay for the floor plan so that guides you to scale so let's go to architecture tab choose roof and by default we are going to create roof by footprint print let's select that so I have my usual draw panel I can use pick walls pick lines or I can do line itself so you can see also the option bar I can uh, choose to define slope I can change the overhang uh, so in this case I want to do it and change that um, so that is when you select walls if I select line this is slightly so the offset is actually it I'm going to check other properties of the uh, roof so the base level is roof that is fine uh, the base offset uh, from level uh, that is fine let's at um, zero the type of roof we can um, basic proof 
So then I can start uh, drawing my roof. Let's uh, start from this end point. So because I changed the offset to two feet, it's going to, as you see, the pink line is two feet above my um, floor plan. So I'm going to go to the next end point and uh, click. Then on this side, I'm going to eyeball it a little bit. So because this is a curtain wall, I want to make sure that uh, my roof is aligned with this line. Actually, as you see, it does not uh, find that as endpoint. So I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. And um, here, that is the endpoint. I'm going to disconnect and do this last piece of whether if I just now that's the end point. Next end point. Because of the offset, as you see, it's not connecting the lines. So it gives me an opportunity to show you something else. So I need to actually clean. I'm going to hit escape to get out of roof command. Uh, okay, there is um, there are a couple of things to fix. So first, let's trim the corners. Let's make sure these lines are connected to each other. I think all of them are connected. So I don't want all of these lines to define slope. So what I need to do is to select the ones that I don't want them to define slope. And then, so it's going to be this one and this one. Always make sure to hit escape or click on modify to get out of the running. So these two pieces I don't want them to define slope, so I'm going to select them and uncheck slope. Then I'm going to finish edit mode and I'm going to check in 3D. Okay, there we go. I have created my roof. There is only one problem, it's not connected to the walls. But so let's hover over one piece of wall, hit tab key. So that's going to select the chain of walls, even the curtain wall. And then click. And then you can say attach top base, select roof. And it's going to connect the walls to the roof. The only thing is that it needs to delete some of the mullions. So let's just elements. There we go. I have a roof that is actually connected to the walls. Okay, I could easily modify my roof if I want the other two sides also to define slope. I can just double click on my roof. I can do that in 3D or I can do that in roof floor plan. Let's select these two. Let's say I want this two also to define slope. And I can also uh, change the dimension. So let's change it to 6 or 12. Apply it. needs to address some other elements by deleting them. Let's say that's fine. And there we go. I have modified my roof. Another type of roof I can create is roof by extrusion. So let's select that. So that's fine. So if I uh, want to create roof by extrusion, it's going to ask me to set work plane. So let's say pick a plane and as my plane, I'm going to select this piece of roof. So then it's going to ask for what level that's going to be at roof level, the offset. Let's change that to, uh, actually let's keep it at one. If we need to change it, we change it later. Uh, so let's say, okay. This time for draw, um, Drawing, let's use a start and radius. And I'm just going to click somewhere on this work plane. And I'm going to create it at, let's use um, eight feet. So that's going to create a four feet radius actually. 
I can hit escape and you can check the properties so I can control the start and end of the extrusion uh, from properties uh, let's change the extrusion end to negative 10 so we make sure that it actually extends and creates an opening right check it so that is the extrusion I have created again if yours doesn't look exactly the same if it looks slightly not aligned with the roof itself you can adjust it by changing the finally we want to create ceiling so i'm going to go back to my level one floor plan and that's where i want to add a ceiling so actually if i add a ceiling here let's try that i can say automatic ceiling and place as you can see, it does not show me any ceiling. And it says none of the created elements are visible in floor plan level one view. That is because I need to be at ceiling plans. So make sure you go to level one of ceiling plans. And that is <coughs> where you can see the ceiling. So the type of ceiling I created the so you can see it is a compound ceiling 2x4 ACT system and the way you can select the ceiling is actually by pressing tab remember that tab hovers over, if you hover over one object and you hit tab key it will actually uh, go through the chain of elements of that object and that way you can select the well, I have created one ceiling by automatically placing ceiling. There is another way to do it, and that is by sketching ceiling. This time, let's change the type of ceiling to 2x2. Two two, and I'm going to draw the ceiling. Again, always pay attention to the option bar. You can unselect chain, you can change offset, you can change radius. I'm not going to change anything. I just want you to know that there is that option bar that you can control the properties before you place an object. So here I'm going to go over the boundary of the ceiling and finish it out here. I have selected uh, or I have drawn my ceiling. You can do that for the other um, parts of the offices. I'm going to repeat that sketch ceiling. That's 2 by 4 at level 1. The height offset from level that you could also change depending on where you want the ceiling to be. If you want it to be a lower ceiling or higher ceiling, you could also change that. Uh -oh. So this time, I have gone a little bit off. I can just grab that and adjust it and finish it more. there you go so you can continue for the rest of them and create the other ceilings we can also modify the material so that is um, something we can see how to do here but modifying material can be applied to different objects um, so let's see how we do that let's go to level four and i can open and from here I already had it open so I want to add a ceiling to my entryway and I want to change the material for it so let's go back to architecture ceiling and I'm going to do it by sketch so from this endpoint So I want to change the type to GWB. Let's finish edit mode. Okay, the mistake I made was that I was at floor plans. So let's go back to level four, ceiling plans. As you see, even at ceiling plans, I cannot see that ceiling because it does not have a pattern. Let's see how to change that. 
If you go to edit type, let's first duplicate it so we don't lose the one we had. Um, it already adds a number two to the name, so that's fine. Let's say OK. Under construction, we have a structure. Let's click on edit. Uh, the finish is actually a gypsum wallboard. And if you click on that, you will see this eclipse uh, for gypsum wallboard material. Let's actually say we want to duplicate selected material. You can give it a different name. Um, let's call it gypsum. Okay. And then under uh, graphics, you can actually see that the foreground foreground has no pattern. So let's click on pattern and let's scroll down to material sand dense. Select that, say OK, and apply it and say OK. Say OK again. OK. So you can see that that material has been applied and the ceiling looks different now. So this is what the building looks like now. This is the ceiling I just added. And you can actually, you can also uh, move it around and check it from the bottom as well. So you can see that it is a sand um, material applied to the ceiling. Please let me know if you have any question about this chapter and uh, I'd be happy to help you. Thank you.